situation. And he is going to give us a historical reference uh, about people being persistent, which we could use as an example of much more difficult times that people have gone through. We are basically in the middle of a pandemic, which is something medical, that's what we do. We're good at it, we'll be fine. He's gonna tell us how other people have survived. Ben, you have the floor. All right, great, thank you very much. So uh, yeah, I, I, uh, unfortunately, uh, for those of you who came for the minimally invasive talk, um, uh, I, I did I did change the topic uh, partially, uh, mostly because of the, the current circumstances, and I thought this 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 current topic that we're going to discuss is going to be very helpful. Also, uh, want to make the 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 um, uh, comment uh, and an announcement. Yes, we're not doing in person uh, grand rounds just yet. Uh, this was supposed to be our inaugural one, but uh, we're going to wait until at least February to to get back to that uh, concept. Um, Bring up my talk here. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Can everybody see this? Yes. OK, great. All right, so uh, topic today, uh, title today uh, is Endurance, Adaptation, Resilience, and Optimism. Um, and uh, and the the through line of this talk, I just want you guys to know, for those of you who who uh, might not be able to stay for the entire thing, is that uh, all of these are skills, um, and actually they're trainable. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about about uh, who does that and how they do it. So uh, we're, we're, let's uh, with that we'll move forward. Okay, um, we're going to start with a story um, because uh, this I think is uh, very apropos to what we're we're dealing with now. Um, a tiny bit more extreme. So um, this is the the boat that's called the Endurance. Um, uh, this this ship uh, was the uh, uh, the ship that was chosen for the Shackleton voyage uh, to cross over the South Pole in 1915. Um, uh, right here, what you're seeing is a picture of the boat trapped in ice. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, the goal of the the expedition was to uh, uh, sail to the South Pole and cross over from from coast to coast. Uh, by, by land um, uh, through uh, circumstances of uh, perhaps a little bit of poor judgment and certainly weather, uh, it changed from uh, a story of uh, um, uh, success to uh, survival. Um, and, and what you're gonna see also is that there's a, a whole series of spectacular uh, failures followed by uh, one spectacular success. Um, so uh, these are the the key players. Although there's there are 28 crew members, the key players in this uh, storyline: Ernest Shackleton, uh, Tom Crean, uh, Frank Worsley, and Frank Wild. Dr. Dempsey loves uh, loves this story because uh, almost everybody's Irish, um, and uh, um, and so uh, this is the this is what happened. Um, uh, they uh, essentially left. Uh, um, uh, England, I uh, left Ireland, uh, sailed down to South Georgia, which is a whaling uh, outpost, um, and then uh, and then uh, sailed into what's called the Weddell Sea, which is a which is a uh, small inlet uh, within the uh, within Antarctica, uh, and um, uh, at uh, January eighteenth, nineteen fifteen, they were trapped in the ice. Um, Meaning that the 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 ice flows from the the typical winter uh, uh, trapped the boat one mile from shore. Um, at that point, uh, they could not uh, move forward, um, and they and they could not, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the way that the trapped ice uh, tends to become uh, quite uh, uh, um, quite unstable. Uh, they were not able to travel to land uh, at that point, so they were stuck in the ice. Um, from January 18th, 1915 uh, until October 27th, 1915, uh, at which point the boat was crushed um, and then sunk in November. Um, and, uh, and so uh, they uh, had already been on the ice uh, for um, uh, almost a year, uh, at which point they, the, uh, um, the boat was sunk. Um, they, they then tried to, uh, from there, make another expedition to land. Uh, we're unable to do that. Um, and then eventually had to wait out uh, from November to April uh, camping on the ice um, until um, they were able to launch their little boats, which we're gonna, you're going to see pictures of that look like little dinghies. 
um, and eventually took a boat journey um, to South Georgia. And when you see what they take to South Georgia, you will be quite shocked that they ever tried to do this and then reached the whaling station. So um, uh, here's the boat trapped in ice, um, of course, frozen, uh, stuck. Uh, this was for, uh, uh, um, we're gonna say 10 months. Um, th this is the crew. Uh, they kept themselves busy by uh, maintaining a, a, a routine to keep the, the, the boats and the dogs and the, and the equipment uh, in place and also morale by uh, doing uh, fun things. Here's this picture is actually a fun, them having a great time shaving each other's heads. Um, and so uh, they, they, of course, did more than this, um, and, uh, and that allowed them to uh, pass their time uh, while they were waiting. Um, uh, they uh, then, uh, in October of uh, 1915, they, they, uh, the ship was crushed. You can see this. They're, they're, they, they removed the supplies from the ship and, um, uh, and uh, were uh, now encamped on the ice. Um, and uh, after roughly a year, they essentially had gone almost nowhere. Um, uh, with no chance of, uh, of help because, of course, back then you couldn't call anybody. Um, so this is, this is what the campsite looked like. Um, and, and it was fortunate, of course, it was supposed to be an overland expedition. So they, they actually had all the equipment they would need uh, to survive uh, outside in Antarctica. So that, that allowed them to survive through this part. Uh, but again, they, from here, they tried to make an expedition to land because uh, their, their thought was if they could cross, then they would be picked up by the other ship that was supposed to get them. Uh, uh, um, and uh, that, that unfortunately failed due to uh, conditions. So again, uh, until April, they were essentially stuck on the ice, uh, encamped. Um, and, uh, and, and the ice is constantly shifting, so they're, they're actually moving uh, the entire time. Um, and uh, and then gradually making their way farther north uh, until eventually they were able to get to the point where um, they could uh, get their small boats. You can see these are essentially rescue craft um, style boats, uh, very small wooden craft, uh, typically open uh, open cockpit uh, boats for for landing on shore. Um, and uh, they they uh, would pull these over over the ice where they could, and then once once they got to where the where open water was, which was uh, infrequent, they would then, uh, then try and navigate that open water as far as they could. And then uh, when they needed to rest, they would pull the boats back up onto a, a piece of ice uh, camp and rest. Um, so they did that uh, for, uh, starting in April of 1916. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it was quite, quite a bit of labor um, and it required uh, a lot of effort from all of the crew. Um, and they finally made it to a, a separate island. Uh, this, this is uh, an uh, island called Elephant Island. Um, Elephant Island is uh, essentially the northern uh, tip of uh, that uh, peninsula that you see uh, in, in Antarctica, closest to um, uh, the um, South Georgia Island, which is that whaling outpost. The, the whaling outpost still from this island is uh, approximately 750 miles to 800 miles away. Um, and so uh, they, the, the, the benefit, of course, is now they're on land, so they don't have to worry about uh, constantly being drowned or crushed by ice um, uh, as weather changes. Uh, and so uh, they, they uh, uh, were able to land here. Uh, there's nothing on this island. Uh, of course, there's, uh, there will be uh, seals and, and, um, uh, and penguins uh, and other wildlife, but, uh, but there's, no, there's no vegetation. Uh, it's just essentially a giant glacier. Um, so uh, at that point, they made a decision that they would leave uh, the majority of the crew behind uh, on the island uh, because the, the, they only had one boat that they had uh, uh, cobbled together and converted into a, uh, uh, what they thought of as a more of a seagoing vessel. Of course, uh, I don't know if Neiman's on the call. He would, he would totally disagree with that. Um, and, uh, and, and so they, uh, they took a crew of five uh, to... Um, sail to uh, South Georgia Island. Um, and so uh, you can imagine what the conditions are like. Uh, this is open open ocean uh, in the Antarctic. Um, the uh, cockpit, of course, is, is not completely uh, watertight. Uh, and so they were constantly getting wet and cold. And uh, that voyage was uh, 800 miles. And to put that in perspective, that's like roughly one third of the, the trip from, from, uh, from England to the United States. Um, and uh, and so they're they're in the, that boat the entire time uh, sailing to uh, South Georgia Island. 
they made it to the island, which was amazing in and of itself, um, but uh, to the wrong side, meaning they were opposite the side of where the whaling uh, station is. Um, and, uh, and what South Georgia Island looks like is a, um, uh, a giant mountain, uh, not, not dissimilar to, to uh, uh, many of the, the islands that you see in the South Pacific, uh, essentially uh, not necessarily volcanic, but, uh, but definitely a large rock outcropping um, and uh, covered with uh, snow and ice at the top. Um, and so uh, once they got there, they had to make the difficult decision to cross over the island by foot. Um, uh, there was a, a, a crew of uh, three or four uh, men who did that. Uh, it had never been done before. No, they did not, had no idea of, of how to navigate and how to get there. Um, and uh, amazingly, they were able to, to make that journey. Um, which uh, is even difficult to recreate in modern conditions. And there's been television shows trying to do that, uh, that have, that have uh, had to turn back uh, even with modern gear. Um, and uh, at that point then, uh, and this is, this is all the rest of the crew s sitting on uh, Elephant Island waiting, uh, they spent 137 days uh, waiting um, uh, for the return of their, their, uh, their uh, rescuers. Of course, uh, you would imagine, uh, since there's no way to communicate, that they had no idea whether actually they were going to be rescued or not, uh, which, which can, uh, of course, uh, create quite a bit of despair as you're waiting uh, and, and uh, for, to, to find out if you'll be saved. This is how they survived. Um, they lived under the, the two boats that they had left and uh, essentially had created a, a, a miniature cabin uh, environment with a, a cook stove um, it, for fuel. They were using uh, whale blubber, uh, seal blubber, those kinds of things um, uh, to keep warm. Um, and uh, and so Shackleton, uh, of course, his goal at this point was to uh, to save his men, um, and uh, it took uh, four rescue attempts to try and get to them. Uh, so they had uh, taken uh, multiple ships from different different uh, locations, but due to weather conditions and things like that, they were unable to get to the island. And, 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 so, and, and so frustrating that they were not always able to, they were not able to signal to the people on the island that they were gonna be coming. And finally on their fourth attempt, uh, after 137 days, they were able to uh, rescue the crew. Um, uh, and and so uh, it's an amazing story, uh, but it's amazing for uh, not only the, the ingenuity of uh, the, the um, uh, members of the team, but also um, it's a more amazing, I, I think, uh, because you can imagine uh, kind of psychologically, psychologically and cognitively how you would feel along the way during the course of this uh, uh, this. Uh, a series of events, um, whether you're a member of the crew or the leader of the crew, um, and and how difficult it would be to maintain your your uh, endurance, your optimism, your resiliency uh, under these conditions. Um, and so, uh, I, the reason I bring up this story, of course, is it's a, it's an amazing story, but I also uh, I, I, it, 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 it it's piqued my interest over the years um, about how do people become uh, so resilient? How do they how do they uh, develop optimism. Is it something that's inborn, or is it something that can be trained? And and I and I think um, as I've as I've looked into it, I think that it's it's uh, it is truly uh, uh, these things are skills rather than uh, just something that you're born with, um, and uh, and that there there are ways uh, to um, to work on these skills yourself. Um, so you're not you're not feeling uh, certainly in the situation we're in um, like. Uh, you, you, there aren't things that you can do. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, many of the survival books that you ever read always bring up this, uh, this, uh, concept, which is essentially getting things done. Um, we all are very good at getting things done. Um, but I think, uh, getting things done, uh, is really only part of the solution. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll show you why, I, why I think that's the case. Um, and, and we all do this. We prepare, we prioritize, we execute, right? So we do things. Um, but uh, the, the fact is that that is only, uh, only enough to get things done, but not necessarily enough to deal with the psychology of your situation. And, and I think that's the important part. Um, and, and so we're going to talk about a few definitions. Um, endurance uh, is the uh, ability to successfully function in a given situation for long periods of time. 
Um, and uh, just below this, uh, just for, uh, I, I put in some tools that we'll talk about later, uh, compartmentalization, segmenting, and visualization. Um, uh, adaptability is the ability to use available resources to accomplish goals. Um, uh, it's uh, um, uh, skill training that we do, stress immersion, which we uh, do, although not in an organized fashion, um, growth mindset, uh, which is something we'll talk about, and then visualization. And then resilience, which is the ability to continue to pursue goals despite stress, anxiety, failures. Um, and again, this goes back to uh, tools such as stress immersion and uh, mission focus, uh, which are, are both important concepts. Um, the difference between optimism and despair. Okay, so if we look at the, the, the definitions, um, optimism is derived from a combination of real and perceived success. And, and the key word there is perception. Uh, there, there's a combination of those two things. And despair is derived from a combination of real and perceived failure. So, so both of them uh, have a psychological component, which is the perception component. Um, and, and so um, when, you, when you're looking for uh, uh, room to uh, adjust uh, your psychologic uh, state, uh, the perception is the key. Um, so uh, you have to think about this from two, two perspectives, at least, I, 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 at least for the purpose of today's talk, we're going to talk about two perspectives. Uh, you're you're um, uh, thinking about training these skills uh, via for, for individuals, uh, but then also uh, thinking about how do you train teams to, to maintain these types of uh, um, uh, uh, optimistic and, and enduring environments uh, over time. And, and we'll talk about two, two uh, um, uh, training paradigms, uh, one that comes from, uh, from military special forces uh, training, and then the, the second one, which is team-based, which comes from, uh, from NASA and astronaut training. So um, uh, um, when, for individuals, you know, uh, that, that join, uh, um, Navy SEALs, Special Forces, of course, they go through a, a, a huge, uh, rigorous screening process. In fact, um, what's going on here, what you're seeing here, is not the training. This is actually just the screening. Um, so uh, for, for all the residents here and the medical students, imagine if your, your uh, interview process involved uh, attempted drownings um, and freezing you and starving you and getting you lost and, and all these other things. These, these are all actually uh, not, not the actual skills that they're meant to do later on. These are simply uh, the, the interview process uh, for trying to figure out how to, how, uh, trying to figure out who can do, uh, who can become uh, a special forces um, uh, um, uh, soldier. Um, and so uh, the, what is, what has come out of this is a, is a realization uh, that uh, in order to even pass the the interview process that you have to train. And it's not just how many push-ups you can do and how far you can run, uh, but in fact, uh, even more importantly, what you think about all those activities. Um, and, and so um, uh, the, the reason for this, of course, is that uh, uh, you, you develop stress during all these types of uh, interview things, uh, uh, excuse me, all these di different, um, uh, um, different tasks that you do, and uh, there are known effects of stress. And these 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 known effects of stress uh, uh, coming from from uh, research on uh, on uh, soldiers that do this are dissociative states uh, where they essentially uh, no longer can uh, function as uh, and make decisions and 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 uh, and to and move forward. Um, and uh, importantly, a loss of working memory, meaning that they they lose the ability to uh, to um, just use their typical short-term memory to, uh, to uh, complete tasks. And then the final thing is uh, they develop physiologic changes as well, which can be changes in, in um, blood pressure, heart rate, um, uh, um, uh, sleep management, those types of things. Um, and, and so the, the, not only the military, but also uh, in, in a kind of a pre-military or, or a training aspect, and, and much of this is in the private world, uh, they, there, there are countermeasures that have been developed, including mindset training, uh, endurance training, and this is, again, more of an endurance, uh, uh, mindset endurance rather than physical endurance, uh, stress, stress immersion training, which is the typical way that, that soldiers are trained in the military as they they learn a skill in a basic, uh, simple way, and then they they gradually are are stressed 
uh, in different environments and have to maintain that skill over time. Uh, and then the final piece is uh, learned optimism. Okay, so again, uh, talking about how optimism can actually be be trained or learned. Um, so uh, this comes from a, a book uh, uh, that I that I found on the subject, and and and, and amazingly, uh, the book is about 550 pages long, and over 50 percent of the book is about um, psychologic concepts and mindset. Um, it, surprisingly, there is not uh, there is not the the book is not entirely about how many push-ups can you do and how many how how can you uh, survive in cold environments. It was actually strictly about mindset. And so the the first and most important thing, and this is uh, for anybody in the in the audience who wants to write these things down, uh, it, you have to have a purpose. Um, you you need to you need to write down your purpose because. Uh, Sometimes when it's in your in your mind, it's uh, not always clear, and you don't always have a, a way to uh, reference it. Um, in in Japanese, they call it ikigai, um, uh, reason for living or purpose. Um, and uh, beyond that purpose, you you think about your motivations for doing what you do. Okay, so just because this is a neurosurgery. Um, meeting uh, we're going to say your motivations for being a neurosurgeon and and you you uh you write down your intrinsic motivations and your extrinsic motivations so intrinsic motivations of course are are preferred because intrinsic motivations are are something you can take with you uh, extra extrinsic motivations like it's it's cool to talk about being a neurosurgeon at cocktail parties uh, are typically not good motivations to uh to hang on to although um, if that is one of them, that that's fine. It's it's just better to have uh, a majority that are intrinsic. Um, step two uh, is 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 a weekly review of your mindset. Okay, so uh, things that uh, have been demonstrated to be uh, beneficial in creating a, a, a uh, adaptable and resilient mindset are um, that you praise uh, effort versus ability, and the reason for that is that. Effort is something that you can continue to work on. Ability is something that you you are you are quote unquote born with, um, and uh, and then uh, you you praise uh, learning orientation over performance. So performance is did I win? Did I succeed? And learning orientation is okay. That went well. What did I learn from that? Uh, that didn't go so well. Uh, what did I learn from that? Um, uh, embracing challenges and setbacks uh, is uh, again uh, essentially taking taking these challenges and setbacks and saying, uh, okay, this is what I like to do. I, I don't I don't really like it when things are too boring. Um, and uh, how can I how can I learn, overcome, and adapt from those? Um, you, you typically, and this is important, your mindset. It's not helpful to need external validation um, and. Uh, it should be mostly you're happy with how you did it yourself uh, and and um, then uh, outside of you you're looking at the success of others say somebody else is getting to do more cases than you um, this is not a threat this is this is just that's their that's that's their situation you need to work on your situation um, you keep working on your 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 effort your learning orientation um, and then locus of control. Uh, do you have an external locus of control or an internal locus of control? So that um, uh, again, that's that's uh, trying to avoid the uh, victim mentality. Um, uh, you know, the, the situation outside of me is is creating all my problems as opposed to okay, there's problems there's problems that are going on uh, in my world in this situation. Uh, what can I do to improve them? What can I do to change them? And then uh, your your behaviors should be more goal directed than habitual. Although habits are important, especially good habits or changing bad habits. So those are the two first steps. The final uh, step uh, that that uh, is is worked on, and these are these are essentially the recommendations are to to look back at these uh, pieces and and work on them uh, uh, week by week as you go through your training or as you go through your life is uh looking at uh your uh step three is to is to review your commitment commitment to your goals commitment to your uh, family uh and, and and others um review uh how much uh of uh, you felt that you were in control versus uh, the world controlling you um, and again this goes back to to your mindset uh, if somebody is trying to drown you um, are you uh, in control of how how well you manage your your breathing, et cetera? What can you control uh, out of those uh, out of this situation that you're in? Uh, and then uh, are you are you uh, willing to continue to accept the challenges that you're facing? And, and so that the 
reviewing these concepts uh, mentally uh, week by week uh, has been demonstrated to help uh, shape uh, the mindset of, of um, uh, uh, soldiers who are preparing to, to join special forces um, and allow them to overcome just, as I said, they're, they're, they're overcoming essentially the interview process as opposed to uh, uh, dealing with the challenges that will come, but it, but it demonstrates that they can, they can use these skills uh, later on uh, to, to deal, with the, deal with the missions and problems that they have to do later on. Um, uh, so, uh, what other tools are they are we taught, or what what can we can we use? Um, so, endurance, like we said, is is uh, um, the ability to continue to um, function even when you are uncomfortable uh, and or uh, the the over long periods of time. So, these are essentially uh, um, the tools that are used are are segmenting, and that's. Uh, a simple one that we probably all do, uh, breaking difficult tasks into manageable bites. Um, the examples that are always given uh, in these books are, are based on uh, uh, long swims or uh, long runs. In our situation, of course, it would be uh, long days uh, or um, uh, in this case, uh, long pandemics. Um, so uh, just taking it day by day uh, or hour by hour, depending on how uncomfortable the situation is, uh, is important. Um, visualization, uh, and this this is important for not only uh, motor learning, uh, learning to do operations, things like that, but even uh, scenarios. Uh, so visualizing uh, it, how you could improve on a scenario, um, uh, the physical the physical situation, the environment, the task that you're going to be doing, the timing. Um, the emotions that you're going to have at the time that you're doing the task and your perspective. Uh, these have been demonstrated uh, in, 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 to be beneficial. Um, compartmentalization, uh, which is, is sometimes uh, taking, uh, say, uh, bad situations or unuse, not useful um, situational information and just putting it aside. Uh, for example, you know, your patient just died, but you have to take care of another one um, it is, uh, is a, definitely a skill. Um, and and uh, uh, examples of how you kind of talk to yourself about this is uh, you know, I am I am feeling this way rather than I am this way. And again, that that creates uh, the I am feeling creates a, an avenue for your for your psyche to uh, change its perception. Um, the uh, um, one of the tools or or, or um, ways that that people learn how to do this, and I invite you to all try this. It's very interesting, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, thing that you can do to test what what happens in your brain is cold water immersion. Okay, um, it, 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 obviously you don't want to do it where you're going to get frostbite. But if you if you put a limb uh, into cold water, um, you can actually uh, with your brain figure out how it no longer can can make it feel as if it no longer is cold. Um, uh, it it is uh, kind of a fascinating. Uh, Thing that happens, and and uh, and um, it is also uh, something that you can practice. Uh, it it is uh, of course not dangerous, and so that's part of the reason that they uh, recommend these uh, um, types of uh, uh, this type of practice uh, in this in these books uh, is to try and try and learn about your mind to to learn about what you can do in in uncomfortable situations um it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily be you know use the ability to to uh, uh, uh to be cold to actually change uh the the situations that you're going to face uh, but it does give you the realization that you can do that um fear and anxiety uh, are discussed um, and and fear and anxiety uh, can both be useful but uh only to real threats um, if you uh, carry too much fear and too much anxiety around, uh, this can lead to uh, dysfunctional behaviors. Um, the, the way that the military deals with this, of course, is to uh, put, put um, their trainees through stress immersion. Um, essentially, they are uh, gradually increasing the amount of stress over time. Um, and, and, and so that you can actually train your brain to uh, control uh, fear and anxiety. Um, typically, that's done by um, uh, creating models of success in your brain so that you, you know that these skills that you have uh, can can actually carry you through a certain situation, but also recognizing uh, when you're when you're developing an overly fearful or overly anxious mindset. 
um, which can can make you uh, distressful rather than uh, what, what they call use stress, which is which is using that stressful uh, using that stress to complete a task. Um, uh, there are breathing techniques that can help uh, manage it when you when you uh, do get uh, when things do get uh, somewhat uh, out of control. One of them is called box breathing, and I, I will uh, let you look that up later. Um, uh, learned optimism, uh, essentially uh, how you talk about uh, talk to yourself about what's going on. Um, uh, we know that positive self talk can improve in por performance. That's been demonstrated. Uh, not only in in the sports sports world, but also in the um, uh, in in uh, high functioning uh, um, uh, uh, military and uh, also uh, um, astronaut environments. Um, and and anxiety can be reframed uh, in certain situations into excitement to complete a difficult task. Uh, a few different uh, learned optimism skills or or, or uh, tools that have been used uh, or, or have been taught. Um, uh, the ABC um, technique, which is uh, looking at an activating event, uh, your belief about uh, why the event occurred and the and and the consequences, and essentially you use this to reframe events to bring agency to your actions. Again, you're going to see a theme of <clears throat> uh, you're in control. Uh, when you let the the world control you, that's when you start to have trouble uh, with stress. Um, re reimagining, revising, and restoring, and this is uh, typically reframing failures into learning exercises. Um, and then another visual visualization technique, which is uh, visual visualizing failure, uh, contingency planning, and recovery. And 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 so um, many many of the residents and and uh, the people who have taken board examinations will recognize this as as uh, what we what we ask you about uh, verbally <clears throat> during the course of board examination questions and seeing whether you can can uh, deal with failure uh, and and how you work around it. Um, so moving on, now we're going to move on to group skills. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, this this talk, and as you're, you're you're seeing, this this talk essentially is a primer, right? So it's not going to give you everything about how to how to to take take away these skills uh, today, but um, uh, give you a rough idea of what's being done. Um, so in in um, both in uh, in aviation, but also in uh, space flight and space exploration. Um, the there is there's a clear and understandable directive, and that is that human error is inevitable, um, and what what is needed is a strategy for managing error. Um, and so, uh, uh, NASA has has realized, and and when you think about what's going on here, you think about the the polar expedition to to Antarctica. Um, this is our current version of polar expeditions. You can't, although there's much better communication, um, you. Uh, there's uh, much better. Uh, uh, there's much better tools that we have uh, in order to try and survive uh, uh, situations in, in outer space. The reality is, you are in outer space. Okay, um, and so if if the um, team that is working together can't function together in outer space, uh, they will. Uh, unfortunately have a catastrophic uh, failures and so um, the critical thing here is how to manage team dynamics um, the the training that goes on in in, um, uh, in NASA is called um, uh, space flight resource management which sounds very benign but essentially is uh, 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 team dynamics and survival uh, in in adverse situations and uh, what you don't see on this is uh, is that again we talked about the getting things done right. That's that's the first thing that 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 is the ability to get tasks done is not necessarily the most important part in team team dynamic dynamics, but it is important. Um, but you see here uh, situational awareness, communication, uh, uh, understanding of uh, how different cultures and nationalities affect people's actions, which is critical because the International Space Station is by definition international. Um, teamwork uh, and and uh, that uh, is, of course, uh, something that we all deal with day to day. Decision making, team care, which is that kind of the wellness and, and uh, morale building. Uh, leadership versus followership. So who's in charge and who's who's following uh, is important. Uh, and those those skills <clears throat> have to be worked on. 
uh, because if everybody's super smart and thinks they're in charge, you're not going to go anywhere as a team. Um, and then conflict management, which we all have to deal with and, and trying to work with, work through ways of discussing wh whose opinion is, is correct or how are we going to manage this, whether it's going to be a consensus opinion <clears throat> or the most expert in the room. Those are all important important things that have to be have to be trained, um, as opposed to just innate uh, parts of our being. Um, they do have a, 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 a I believe it's a twelve week training course on it, but then also do an uh, a uh, expedition version, uh, which is field based in a wilderness environment via um, the National Outdoor Leadership School. Uh, again, uh, the main competencies that they're trying to learn uh, is uh, leadership, followership, decision making communication, uh, living together in, in, in uh, group living and, and, uh, and self-care. So um, uh, training these skills will improve your chances. Um, uh, of course, in 1915, uh, essentially um, the way that the way that was, this was done uh, was that uh, Shackleton uh, interviewed all these men uh, and uh, he decided that they had the, the, these abilities. They, they developed them over time, of course, they, none of these and none of these men were uh, particularly soft characters um, and had already been on expeditions that had, had, had succeeded and failed in the past. Um, and so uh, that was a hugely important part to it, uh, that, that each independently had uh, that kind of uh, developed those skills over time. And then, of course, Shackleton had a, had a, had a very important understanding of, of how to manage team dynamics, how to improve morale, communication. Uh, and then, and then also his his uh, most important mission, which was to get everybody home uh, eventually. And so, uh, that that's that's how that amazing uh, uh, rescue occurred. Um, in conclusion, uh, endurance, adaptability, resilience, and optimism are trainable skills. Um, you need to seek out tools to help improve these qualities, both personally and in teams. Um, and you need to use and practice these skills. Um, you'll need them and use them throughout your life, not just uh, during this current uh, uh, crisis that we're dealing with. Um, but more importantly, uh, things are looking up. <clears throat> uh, you are not currently trapped in ice on a boat in Antarctica. So with that, I'd, uh, any questions or comments? Um, these are the uh, a couple of the resources that uh, you, you'll see. Uh, throughout the talk, the, the rest of the references are in there. So thank you. Thank you, Than. We're going to put this on the website as well, because I think it's an important and timely um, review of who we are, what we stand for, and how we can be better at it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Than, this is great. Um, you know, you've uh, really hit on the main points of how to deal with stress when, when you're in this situation, but recruitment is, is something you started your talk with. Does that give you um, an idea of how to change recruitment into a tough medical specialty like ours? I mean, I guess the equivalent of push-ups would be uh, scores on tests uh, and- uh, Right, right, right. right. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's uh, an, an interesting divergence uh, between between uh, how how uh, and and you know that 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 is a very different uh, way that people are recruited uh, in in uh, we'll use this example of military special operations, but but I also uh, believe that that NASA is also has more stringent. Uh, demands to the recruitment than what we are able to to do at this point, um, just because of the way the ACGME has has, has modified our, our things over time. That doesn't mean we can't come up with our own uh, ways of doing it that are within their guidelines. Um, the uh, I have not been able, uh, didn't take the time or, or have the time to look into that further, but I, I agree that's important. Um, and and I and I think that the the other difference is. Um, uh there there yes um uh, neurosurgery is uh, uh demanding cognitively physically emotionally um, um but it's imp also important to know uh that uh, for many people you can improve on their on their skills uh, these 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 things that we talked about these psychological skills over time <clears throat> the fact is we don't do that either um, we we hadn't in the past um 
and uh, and and um, we, I, I think there's there's great opportunity to do that in the future. So even even if uh, we have people that are on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, you know, there there are ways to try and help help them improve. Um, so that I think that's important too. But there are special skills that are, uh, you know, for, for a field like medicine. For example, can you significantly improve on empathy? I I would say um, I I think there's a I think I I, I think there's a um, a lot of dis discussion about uh, to be had about what what is innate and what's trainable. I think that would be the best way of putting it. But I I, I do think that. What you you also see, uh, Benny, is that there's uh, people self-select into these things too. Okay, so that, that once they realize once they realize that they are em empathetic and that their mission in life is to help people, they typically are moving in the direction of of medical school. Now it, that doesn't mean they're going to be the most empathetic person, uh, mm -hmm. but but the but the the important thing about uh, let's take neurosurgery for instance. You know they uh, it. it it used to be uh, we were gods walking the earth, okay, and that that is not the case anymore, right? So you you it used to be that the external or extrinsic reasons for becoming a neurosurgeon uh, were were very large, um, and now it's it's very much uh, they, it, there's still you have to have that intrinsic uh, um, happiness or joy with your job day to day um, because it's not it's not like you are walking down the hall and everybody's cheering for you. Right. And so so that that all comes along and that that I, I think students feel that in medical school. So they I think that you're 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 developing these intrinsic skills uh, early on and uh, you're going to make that decision about how much kind of stress and difficulty and, and, and things like that you're going to inflict. So you somewhat self-select. Now, um, that isn't going to necessarily uh, translate to everybody being uh, good, empathetic uh uh, providers, and, and I think I think you're right about that. Um, but but I, I I'm think, not. I think I, uh, I'm just saying it's a it's a complex issue, and right, we don't necessarily look at all these factors when we. No, we don't. Out. No, we don't. It's very hard right now because it's, it, essentially we're interviewing people remotely, and then they show up. <laughs> they show up, and they're hired. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's it's a it's a very different world at the moment. Um, and uh, and then and then the system is 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 uh uh for better or worse bias towards uh, us training what we get as opposed to saying well you're you're just not going to cut it and and right. and uh and and i think that that uh is is a, is a difference for sure than the compared to compared to what 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 the military can do which which essentially they quite honestly when you when they go to these job interviews quote unquote i'm calling it a job interview they they actually are not fired they're allowed to quit it's not <laughs> Nobody's fou nobody's ever fired. They they just they just keep doing what they're doing um, until they can't do it anymore, and then they quit. So so it's a different scenario. It's not they're not actually tell they're not actually firing anybody. So so uh, with that, I hope I hope everybody learned something, and and uh, and then also can uh, can reach out to me if they want to get access to some of these, and and maybe we'll turn this into something uh, uh, more fruitful in the future. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Take care.